Good evening and uh, welcome to the second 2021 Media Arts and Graphic Design Capstone Group. We're currently trying to get a couple of other cameras up and going, so uh, just to give you a quick heads up on the format. Uh, we have five seniors right now who are going to be showing uh, their capstone work for us. And the, uh, the process that we've been doing right now is that they will be sh uh, playing back their uh, introduction videos. They each were asked to record a small introduction video explaining their capstone, and that will be followed by the capstone itself. Uh, so we'll just kind of work through all of those. It's about a 40 to 45 minute clip of all of their content. Uh, we're coming in on the, the Facebook stream, and so the comments are the place for you guys to post your questions. I'll be sorting through those questions uh, for the Q&A that we're going to be doing after our uh, video clips. So if you're seeing something, you have interesting questions, or something comes to mind, feel free to record them there. I'll sort through and look for the questions later. Uh, at this point in time, I think we're ready to cue the clip and start playing our capstones. Hello everybody, I'm Sam, and thanks for checking out my capstone. Uh, I'll be graduating in a double major, both graphic design and media arts. What are my dreams? My dreams are like what any little boys would be, flying through the air to move something with his mind, or to shoot these kinetic beams from his hands or body in any cool way. We put ourselves in our hero's shoes and want to become them. That is what I want to do. I want to create stories from my imagination and make them a reality. So today I'll be having two capstones for you guys today. One you'll be able to see on the screen and that will be a animation of a superhero. His name is Vitriol. He is a human battery and he is inspired by my brother and a hero he wanted to be. And my other capstone is outside. It will be in the hallway and it's a comic book about this cool, awesome superhero who blows up and dies. Yeah, and I hope you like it. I'm Clayton Johnson, a senior media arts major. Uh, my capstone project was a music video called Lies for Emmanuel uh, KD. Uh, so in the very beginning, uh, I was mostly just trying to brainstorm ideas that I thought played to my strengths or my interests. So some of the ideas that I thought of was like doing uh, some sort of a broadcast uh, or something with broadcasting because I do a lot of work with that. Uh, and then the other idea I had was to do some sort of animation or do some sort of, you know, visual uh, part for a music or do a music video. Um, and so that's what I ended up going along with. Uh, so to start, I was able to contact artist Sammy Rivera over email and he had a mixtape that he was working on at the time. So uh, I talked with him and we started getting to work on some visuals and potentially a music video for that. So this was the first big hurdle that I started going through on the project um, just because the artist wasn't always the most responsive and uh, he didn't really have any concepts or anything really in mind for the video so I was just kind of going off of nothing. Uh, during this time I spent a lot of time studying other music videos or looking for effects or cool things that people did in industry level music videos that you know would perhaps give me some inspiration or some sort of a starting block for planning my music video. So basically I started getting to work uh, putting together a storyboard and shot lists for some of these concepts and some of these effects and transitions that I wanted to use uh, in the music video. Uh, so then around the end of the semester in December, uh, I was texting Sammy and he actually told me that the song that I was working on, Mixed Emotions, was no longer going to be on uh, the tape. So obviously 
I had to start from scratch, and that was a little bit frustrating having to shift gears, uh, planning one thing to planning a whole different song. So the new song was called Wither, and it was very fast-paced. It had very uh, more traditional hip-hop uh, kind of a sound to it, and I think that that would have worked really well with some of the transitions and effects that I was trying to use and that I had done tests for up to this point. Unfortunately, again, I was running into issues working with the artist, uh, texts and emails just being left on red, um, or just not responding for a large period of time, not really getting any feedback on any of the ideas or things I was trying to bounce off of him. So we planned dates like a month in advance, and I think the week of filming, I texted or emailed him almost every day and didn't get a response until like the night before at like nine, um, and just logistically didn't work out. They were gonna end up coming to Mankato in the evening and you know, I had it planned for a whole day of filming up until that point. So uh, I basically had to tell him that I was gonna have to take my capstone in a different direction um, just because logistically I wouldn't be able to make a video uh, with the amount of time that we had. I did have to start from scratch and start working on a storyboard and come up with a concept for a music video again. Um, this time I asked Emmanuel, who's a student here at Bethany, uh, he presented the song Lies to Me, which I really liked. It had a really great theme, trying to be somebody you aren't. Uh, and I thought like a lot of different scenes or a lot of different effects can play off of that and show, help emphasize that theme really well in the music video. Uh, then pretty much shortly afterwards, Kurt Paulson had presented the idea to me to use uh, this sort of animation generation uh, software that he had found online and it actually uses the My Heritage website to take a flat photo and just animate some basic movement into it. So then over the next week or two me and Emmanuel sort of brainstormed back and forth coming up with uh, concepts or ideas we wanted to do uh, with the music video um, and when we were going to shoot them. So uh, that was kind of a lot more collaboration than I had with the previous artist so I was extremely happy and thankful for that. and. Uh, we started shooting them, getting some of those scenes done, uh, despite some of the bad weather. And then here we are now, uh, the last week I've been editing all this together, working on compositing that heritage effect uh, into the actual freeze frames uh, in the timeline. And uh, I think it's coming together good. Maybe I'm not in love with you, I'm in love with the idea Had been out of tune, why I haven't sounded clear Don't like to admit, cause I really got a fear If I say the truth, you'll move on and disappear What has my life become, holding on to fantasies This is my kingdom come, burning down in front of me Can we just keep dancing, blocking out the music I don't wanna mess it up, don't wanna lose Playing with my mind so oblivious To the fact that you're with someone There will never be in us Whole world is falling I don't know what to choose Happy with the lies Or be sad with the truth I live my life Believing lies I cannot help but fantasize Filling up my head Temporary pleasures I don't seem to care Good with letting go, never had a lot of friends Growing up I felt alone, why can't I make it end? Trying to make everybody stay, in my life is dominant Learned that nothing lasts forever, hurts but that's what it is Sugar caught the raw, so it's sweet when I be tasting Heavy in my heart, crack a smile I be faking Never nothing wrong, tell myself that I'm amazing End of it all, I'm not really what I make it 
out of be I've been empty inside can it be that there's more in this life God speak to the friends I tried reality I give in its time I live my life believing lies I cannot help a fantasize Filling up my head with temporary pleasures. I don't seem to care. So this year has been kind of crazy. So at the beginning of the year, I had this like big long list of just themes and ideas that were really personal to me um, and that I kind of wanted to dive deeper into. And I thought my capstone was a good place for that. But I was originally going to do a short film based off some of my favorite poetry. But then Kurt encouraged me to go in a more personal direction. He kind of just told me to do whatever I wanted basically so naturally I just started taking pictures and I'm really interested in like the human form in photography so I took self portraits basically I was really interested in the theme of identity and my personal identity who I am to the people in my life and who I am as an artist and as a professional so that was something I wanted to touch on with this whole thing as well. And I wanted to do something bold and I didn't want to tell myself no and not do it just because I was scared of what people might, might think or might perceive. Since I was doing self-portraiture already, I, I wanted to stick with that. Um, it just came kind of instinctually to me and I didn't want to just uh, pass on it just because I was afraid people might think, oh, it's a picture of me, so it might be like vain or like something to do with narcissism or something. Because honestly, it's kind of like very vulnerable and scary in some ways to present a picture of yourself to so many people and have them like look at you. Kurt and I agreed that I would try to take four photos a week as a goal and just keep making and making and then eventually something would hopefully like click or I would like get this idea or be able to like look back at what I had made and then find like a pattern from all the, the mass amounts of photos I had taken. And sometimes it was really hard because sometimes I would just spend hours in Photoshop on like one image just trying to get it perfect and then I eventually had to just move on and like keep going. So I have a lot of like unfinished stuff and a lot of ones that I'm also like really proud of that just like I didn't use in the final piece because I didn't really go with the end narrative that I went with. I was continuously struggling to create my own story with my pictures or create like a narrative within like one single still image or with like a couple different still images. For some reason that was just like very challenging for me to create a narrative visually instead of you know writing it like a story. So. When I was looking into like other photographers, looking through books and stuff, I was also looking into like, like I said, what to base it all on. So I was looking into like Greek mythology, Hinduism and like hand mudras and stuff and all of the symbolism in those too. I was also looking at how the female is represented across all cultures because that was really interesting to me. The female and like the tie into my theme of identity, which is one of the main themes I wanted to touch on. I also based kind of more of the narrative around um, the Apollonian and Dionysian dichotomy that Camille Paglia talks about in her book, Free Women, Free Men. Paglia talks about the duality of men and women based off a philosophical concept from Friedrich Nietzsche. The Apollonian represents rationality, structure, logic, and the Dionysian represents chaos, irrationality, stuff like that. Peglia uses that to talk about women's connection to nature and um, the duality between men and women. And I found that really interesting, so I wanted to use 
those kind of metaphors visually in my whole like landscape in my characters in kind of the action depicted across the, the entire thing so since i did photography um, I also printed my capstone, even though I animated it in After Effects, it's also printed and hanging in the YFAC if you want to go see it there too after the show.
Capstone is a 2D animated miniseries called Vegetation Circulation. And we're going to watch the first two episodes of the miniseries. I started out knowing I was going to do an animation because I've always loved that sort of like playful nature you can get in animation. You can't really accomplish the same sorts of things in live action and I felt a lot more comfortable just storytelling in animation. So I wrote it for screenwriting last semester and that was really good to understand where the flaws in the story were. I'm a big fan of adult animation shows such as Rick and Morty, Disenchantment, or The Midnight Gospel. Those shows are really sort of the humor, the action that I'm kind of trying to summon in this miniseries that I've started. Something about me is I really like to entertain people, which is weird because I'm anxious all the, uh, a lot of the time, but I like to entertain people and I think humor is very important, so I really want to sort of share that joy that I have in, in making jokes and just laughing at myself and just sort of situations in, in life. And so this, this capstone was a really good opportunity for me to um, sort of share that humor that I have, that I enjoy watching, and that was fun. I really got into eco-minimalism over the summer, which is pretty much just trying to live the most, like, friendly to the planet, I suppose. So the plot kind of became, what if we just, like, didn't have that nature at all? So what if it was something condemned, something bad. I think we do kind of take for granted that we have trees and we have, you know, weather. Like in Minnesota especially, we get everything here. There's this concept of like, what if we didn't have any of that? And what if there was someone who was so convinced that bringing that stuff back was important? Juniper was a lot of fun to, to work on. Um, she is such a strong-willed person. She's very confident. And that's very much out of my wheelhouse. I'm pretty happy with her as a protagonist. I'm, and I'm pretty happy with, with the world that she's put in. It challenges her a lot. I think the go-getting attitude of there's this problem and I know I can fix it is pretty inspiring. I did the whole project uh, mostly. I did mostly the whole project in Toon Boom Harmony, which is pretty much the industry standard for adult animations. So it was challenging to learn a completely new program, which they don't teach here. It was a time and a half to have to build the whole thing from the ground up. When you're filming um, things in live action, you have places that already exist that you can utilize. Um, but for me, for making an animation, I had to build literally everything. I had to build the background, I had to make these characters, um, everything they hold, everything they interact with. I had to utilize my voice actors, Mijin and Peter, who were absolutely fantastic. They were such lovely people to work with. They just did a phenomenal job bringing these characters to life um, that didn't have life six months ago. The project would definitely not be the same without them and, and their time and effort that they put into it. It was pretty good to like have the story that I've built from scratch and be able to present it like it is in a form that is presentable for people to watch and take in and that's something I've not really accomplished yet in time until now so <laughs> now we get to watch it. I have free drugs! I got magic drugs! Get some powers! And they're totally free! Try out some magic! There's no negative side effects. Try some free drugs! Get magical abilities! Anything is possible! And they're totally not illegal by any means. Uh, do you want to try a magic drug? It's free and really cool. Right now? Yeah! Are they safe? Yeah. And free? Mm -hmm. It's not gonna kill me, is it? No, 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 no. It's just magic. Here, I'll show you. Pretty cool, huh? What is happening?
happening? This is magic. Wow. I still have no idea what's happening. <laughs> Move this, like me. What? Move it. Uh. Uh. Um, I'm Juniper, by the way. Uh, I'm Angus. Wait, 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 uh, don't I know you? Oh, I know a, a Jupiter. Uh, she and her family went missing like ten years ago. Well, uh, it's Juniper. Um, but yeah, that's that's me. Um, Eastside Elementary. Yeah, that would be it. Cool. Good to have you back. What what are these, by the way? Capsules to take down the council, their flatfoots, and free the oppressed class. I dig that, but um, yeah, what is it? Plants. And some other stuff. Oh. Hello, Mr. Denzel. Hello? I'm gonna skip straight to the facts. I know you want more out of life. You know more than you're allowed to say as a teacher and everything. What are you talking about? I want to get rid of the council and their ugly henchmen. Why would you say that? And again, how do you know me? I have a drug that'll give people powers. It's to help me destroy the council. What if you're the council attempting to entrap me? A council member would remove my bones if I did this. What is this supposed to be? That's an odd-looking horse. It's a fish. Swims in the water. Also, a tasty dinner. What? I lived in the forest past the Burnland for 13 years. Are you okay? Peachy. A fruit. If you take one of these, you can do magic. Like my fish. J Juniper? Try it. Here. Squeeze it and think of something you love. Preferably not other drugs. Wow, uh, Juniper. If enough people are together, with this kind of power and knowledge, the council stands no chance. Nature can come back. Should it? Hi, my name is Aaron Stoop, and I did a thing. So, currently, I am sitting on the stage where my film was shot. The whole deal with the film is that it was a dual project. It was both my media arts film, and I also wrote and directed and put on a play that happened on the stage. We used the same script, the same actors, the same lights. We used kind of the same deal. The reason we did that is because I am both a media arts major and a theater minor. And both of those things require a capstone project. The idea was to combine the two projects into one big super project. I would use the same actors, the same lighting, the same script. I would use all of the same tools that the two mediums share and create two separate things. My inspiration for all of that is I have a deep distaste for recordings of theater shows. I come from the theater. I've been doing theater for over seven years. And every time I miss a show or someone sends me a show to see, it is just a camera pointed at a stage. And I really do not like those because the whole beauty of theater is being here in the environment live as it happens. And the whole beauty of film is being able to do these camera tricks and these effects and making sure everything is perfect. And when you just point a camera at a live performance, it kind of muddles the two. So I had an idea. What if I took a live theater performance and worked the filming of a short film into that production process? 
This idea has undergone a lot of changes. It's now been over a year since I initially thought of and proposed the idea. Uh, initially, it was going to be a one-man show uh, with me doing effectively everything, and that quickly fell through. One of my inspirations was a short film by Abigail Thorne, where one actor played multiple roles within the same scene. And so I had this idea to try and do almost a one-man show where I would set up cameras and I would play the whole scene once as one character and I would do the whole thing again as another. And very quickly that idea kind of fell through once the actual writing process uh, came in. I ran a few test shoots. Uh, I had my friend Kate Nussbaum come in and help me with that in testing and that didn't work out. After a while of mulling it over, uh, I came up with a bunch of different concepts. I was gonna put colored tubes around the stage and they were gonna migrate like a clock and they were gonna all spin around or I was gonna, I was gonna make this maze of pillars for my actors to go around. And every time I would present this, an idea like that, there would be a follow-up question, which is, okay, but what happens? And that was the hardest question to answer, because I had all of these conceptual ideas and these technical elements, and I had no idea what story I was gonna tell. Eventually, after months of going over and mulling over kind of nothing, uh, Peter Bladel, the theater department, handed me The Lesson by Ionesco. And he said, why don't you read this? My idea immediately popped in that I was going to do a repeating police interrogation. I would work in my inspiration from that initial film that I saw. I get to keep my iteration idea from the second run through, and I have an actual scene that I can write within. And I rushed off and got to work without actually reading the lesson. So one advantage of being in the theater department and working on the stage and being part of the theater season is that I was able to take advantage of a lot of the resources. I had the entire uh, set crew. They painted and reworked my set as I needed to. I had uh, Benji Inager and his lighting crew kind of working on lights with me. So when we hit filming week, which happened to coincide with tech week and our final dress rehearsal week for the theater half, it ended up being kind of a mad rush where we came in Sunday through Thursday five, six hours a day, and we just had to hammer through it. So we wrapped filming on Thursday, March 25th, which was a giant relief because we were afraid that we would have to take extra filming days after the performance had already been done. But because we were able to kind of only shoot what we needed those last few days, and we just decided on Thursday we were gonna hunker down and just go till it was done, uh, finishing up that Thursday was a massive relief. I'd like to give a big thank you to the Bethany Lutheran College Theater Department for letting me use the space and letting me use their set and lighting crews to kind of help me design this so I could focus more on the filming and the writing and the directing and I wouldn't have to worry about physically making the space happen. So that was a huge help. Of course, a big thank you to Bethany's media department. They kind of gave me free reign to use whatever equipment I wanted to use, and that really helped a lot to have the freedom to just run over to the equipment room, grab what I needed, run back here, and just keep the ball rolling at all times. Big thank yous to my actors, Jacob Stellick and Hallie Blaze, for putting up with this whole thing. I think very few actors would be willing to come in and shoot for six hours a day for four days straight, and I really appreciated everything they did as well as doing a live performance and a normal theater production. It was just incredible all around work from them. Giant thank you to my stage manager and first assistant director, Katriana Berglund. Uh, she had never done anything in media or film, had never stage managed, and she just kept me on track all the time. Everyone around me made this process a lot easier. So yeah, that's the film, that's this whole thing. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you enjoyed the film. Watch it again anytime. It'll be somewhere. See ya.
How are you? Are you comfortable? Ready to get going? Can you state your name for me? My name is Liz Blackwell. Liz, hey, I'm Al. As you may have assumed, we're looking into the disappearance of one Ted Blackwell. Any comment on that? I don't want to pry too personally. I know this is very difficult for everyone. We're just trying to get a handle on what happened. September 28th. Where were you on September 28th? Please answer the question. If you don't say anything, we won't get anywhere. Both of us will be here forever. September 28th. September 28th, Friday. I went to the mall, spent the whole day there. What did you do all day? Shopped, watched people, drank a smoothie, watched a movie. I'm not sure, it was a long time ago. September 28th was less than three weeks ago. Three weeks is a lifetime when your husband is missing. Speaking of which, don't think I haven't been watching this entire investigation. I can't help but notice I'm the only one you've brought up for questioning. Am I really at the top of your list? Do my tears and the dismantling of my world rouse too much suspicion? We usually begin with those closest to the victim. You are the man's wife and know more about him than anyone. Who else would we start with? Maybe someone that hasn't given dozens of statements every day for the past three weeks. I can't go 20 minutes without someone asking me with more questions. Are there really any I haven't answered? I can only think of one. Well, let's hear it. Then I can get out of here and go back to watching my world fall apart. Fine. Are you responsible for your husband's disappearance? <laughs> You've got gall, I'll give you that. Please answer the question. Answer it how? Is there really any response that'll make things better? If I say yes, then you have what you want and you lock me up. If I say no, then you won't believe me and you'll keep me here. Can you really not think of a better way to figure this out? Just bring in everyone you can and ask them that. I'm sure you'll find the right guy eventually. Miss Blackwell, please answer the question. Are you joking? This is a farce. I do whatever you want me to do. Say whatever you want me to say. Go wherever you want me to go. And you have the audacity to ask that? I've had enough. I want out now. Miss Blackwell, please. No, I am done with your questions. Your bland room. I am done with this investigation. And I am done with you. Answer the questions and we'll all be free to go. No, this I is ridiculous. I know you're I know you're I know you're I know you're Hey. What's new? You've clearly had a rough couple weeks by the looks of you. If you just want to get started, this shouldn't take very long. Elizabeth Fremont, could you state your name for me? My name is Elizabeth Blackwell. Fremont is my maiden name. It sure is. Hey, Alexander. As you may have assumed, we're looking into the disappearance of one Theodore Blackwell. Any comment on that? I don't want to pry too personally. I know this is very difficult for you. We're just trying to get a handle on what you think happened. September 29th. Where were you on September 29th? Please answer the question. If you don't say anything, I won't be able to help you. We both know you had nothing to do with the incident. We'll both be here forever. 
September 29th. September 29th, Saturday. I went to the park. Nature always puts me at peace. What did you do all day? Had a picnic, walked the trails, maybe killed my husband. I'm not sure it was a long time ago. September 29th was less than three weeks ago. Three weeks is a lifetime when you're covering up a murder. Speaking of which, don't think I haven't been watching this entire investigation. I can't help but notice I'm the only one you've brought in for questioning, which proves that you have zero actual leads and are just guessing. We usually have a contingency plan when these kinds of things happen. We can't let what really happened get out, so we make a big show. Who better to pin it on? Nobody. I'm the closest to your victim and therefore your first choice. Incredible work taking the easy answer when it presents itself. Any more questions before I leave and do it again? I can only think of one. Then let's hear it. Then I can get out of here and open up a new investigation. I've got a really fun one coming to throw you for a loop. Fine. Why are you willing to take the fall for your husband's disappearance? <laughs> Please answer the question. Answer it? How? I've told you what I've done and what I will do again. How do you not understand what's happening? Can you really not think of a better way to figure this out? Just let me go and see how far I get before you have to track me down again. How far do I have to go before you listen to a single thing I say? Miss Fremont, please answer the question.
Well, I think that uh, we saw a very eclectic uh, assortment of, of capstones there tonight, and uh, we were still in the live stream while we were doing a little bit of applause in the studio, but I would like you guys to to know and for our online audience to know that there was a bit of applause in here, even though live stream feels kind of cold and a little bit sterile. There is a lot of appreciation here for this, and the capstones that we saw tonight are genuinely interesting. There's a lot of variety here. I think that's the strong suit of, of the four capstones that we just saw here, is there's very little in common between each of those as we went from capstone to capstone. A lot of interesting variety about that. So for the rest of the night, uh, I've been gathering up some questions that have been coming in off the chat, and uh, otherwise we can be pulling questions from the faculty here. Uh, again with me tonight is Professor Andy Overn and Professor Amanda Quist, and I am Kurt Paulson in the Media Arts Department. Uh, we have a few uh, family members and friends in the studio with us, so anybody and everybody is welcome to ask questions, and I will open it to the faculty first to start us off. I think we can start the same place that we started last night. That's what everybody wants. So a question for everybody. What was the most challenging uh, aspect of your project? And also, what part was your favorite? Um, you know, you have a lot to do. And doing it's probably the hardest part. Um, doing it's probably the hardest part, but also, like, it's cool stuff, so after you get it done and you can look at it, I guess that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I think the hardest thing for me was just deciding what to do because it's very open-ended and there's a lot of things you want to do, but you have to kind of keep it in uh, just like frame of what you can actually capably be able to finish uh, and then decide and commit to that. Uh, and then my favorite thing was, again, probably just being able to see the finished product, being able to uh, help Emmanuel with the video. Um, so yeah, since mine was like kind of more personal, um, that was something I really struggled with. Um, and then I really appreciated getting the opportunity to work in like a collaborative form, because um, we had a few photo shoot days um, where Kurt Paulson and Anya Schrader and I got together. Um, and I really enjoyed those shoots. Those were really fun. I think for me, the most difficult part was actually putting it all together, because there's so much to do. And I kind of talked about that. But just like, I'd never like completed like a whole project like that. So it was like, that was just overwhelming in some aspects. But the best part was definitely like in test showing that first episode, like people actually like laughing at it. I was like, <laughs> something's coming across. So that was pretty cool. So I've never been much of a writer. And I think I mentioned it in my intro thing where I, I had all these technical aspects that I had all these big high concepts to do. But when it came to actually bunkering down and writing the script, I kind of was completely lost. And it took a lot of input from a lot of different people to kind of just push me through that barrier where I had my actors. And the first two rehearsals we had were just, welcome to the writer's room. Let's fix these issues that we have. And I think the best part is um, I'm, I'm not much of a writer. I'm much more of a, of a play kind of guy where I just like doing cool stuff. And so once we finally got in onto the stage, all the lights on, the sets, everything set up, and I just got to play for six hours a day for a whole week, that was kind of the actual shooting was probably my favorite part because that's when the fun bit gets to happen. Uh, I'm going to ask one more, a new one. Um, I want to know what you hope your final project says about you. I hope that it kind of portrays my, I, I hope that it kind of portrays my, my style, my, my, my enjoyment of kind of combining things together. Because I think, I, I couldn't quite tell, but to me it seemed very obvious that it was kind of filmed on a stage setting 
And so, especially with those wide shots. And so I, I hope that it, what it says about me is that I hope it shows kind of my, my ability to create within a space and my ability to kind of combine separate things into one better thing. This is tough. <laughs> um, I think it, I mean, I hope it shows that like, I'm not afraid to talk about topics that are maybe less than ideal to talk about because <laughs> there's a lot of stuff going on in mine. So, I mean, I wasn't scared about talking about that in that, so maybe I'm not scared to talk about that in real life. Um, I guess I hope mine, I guess sh it proves to myself that I am able to take a risk and do something that might seem intimidating to myself um, and actually complete the work. Um, yeah. Uh, I think the biggest thing for me was just like the technology, the animation software that I used was very new, very current. And I think that was a big thing for me to be able to do something, you know, that's seemingly on the edge or something very new like that and to be able to prove that I could, you know, use it. What do I want? I would say um, animating is harder than you think. Um, when you look at it, I have good flow and motion. But I don't know. Um, you got to do something you like. So I like it. <laughs> so I don't really care. OK, next question. Uh, we spend a lot of time in class learning how to do things and I think maybe one of the things that I'm hearing is that knowing how to do something is the easy part when you have a set of skills the question is what do you do with them and what is worthwhile what is interesting and and I'm curious uh, first maybe what was the uh, inspiration that this defined the the final version of what you actually came up with and Maybe this is maybe this is slightly off topic. Go back four years, you were a freshman. You're graduating next week. Go back four years. What did you anticipate this was going to be like? How how is it different than what you maybe uh, expected when you were a freshman? Um, this is kind of what I wanted to do. Um, I got a comic book right here, and I did an animation. Um, that's kind of what I was shooting for. Um, how would it have been different? Oh, I don't know. I, this this is kind of what I thought it was going to be. So I'm happy with it. Uh, yeah, so I think when I first came to Bethany, I was really like film track oriented. Like I really wanted to make short films or be part of a crew that makes films. Uh, and so I guess that falls a little bit. I mean, music video is similar, but it's not exactly what I expected I would be doing. Uh, and then also I do a lot of broadcasting work too, so um, that was another, you know, right when I got here I thought, well, I'll work for the hockey team, that will be my track, that will be the stuff that I like to do, and I'm glad, I guess, that I branched out to other things. Um, so I was more focused on graphic design when I first came here. Um, I'm not really sure if I ever thought about Capstone until <laughs> I actually had to. Um, but my inspirations for the final thing um, was, like I said in the introduction video, um, Camille Paglia, um, her book, and then um, I've always loved this photographer, Brooke Shaden, who also does digital manipulation. Um, so she's been a big um, influence to me um, ever since I found her like a couple years back, so. When I started at Bethany, I only knew that I liked media <laughs> in general. I liked movies and TV shows, I guess. And then sort of like finding the niche of like, oh, animation's something I can do. I have fun doing animation. Um, so I guess that's different. I mean, it's, it's helpful to know now. I don't think freshman year me would have known that. Um, and for inspiration, I mean, I kind of talked about it, but just like the adult animations in general, I think 
they're really fun to watch and I enjoy that. So yeah, I wanted to share that a little bit. So when I came in and even especially now, I was very much on more of a broadcast track than a filmmaking track. And my plan for the longest time was to not even do a capstone. I, my plan was to do an internship instead. And then the big bad thing happened and suddenly internships wasn't quite a viable option anymore. And at that point, I kind of had to look around to things that I was inspired by and things that, I, that were important to me. And then so I had the idea to combine the two capstones that I have to do anyway and do this thing, this weird idea that I have had for a while to just combine theater and film into an actual good thing. Uh, so, yeah. Okay, uh, I'm gonna consolidate a couple of these questions from online. Uh, people are interested in the stuff that didn't get made. Were there ideas that you had that you had to abandon and you couldn't bring into the project for whatever reason, and what were those ideas? And also, were there ideas that you have now been thinking of, maybe even this last week, that have been generated from the making of this project? Has this project inspired you to do something new? Is it pushing you to do another project, some new work, some new video, some new play? Is there anything new on the horizon that's coming because you did this capstone? So that's the two part. Ideas you abandoned, and what's the next project? Was there an inspiration? So I had a lot of stuff that didn't quite work in the production process. You could see in my intro video, I played around with dry ice for a bit uh, because what I wanted to do uh, towards the end of my film, when it's the big light door, uh, instead of just putting a white wall back there and hitting it, I wanted to make like this this waterfall of dry ice smoke and then hit that with light so it looks like my actor is almost like appearing out of the ether. And long story short, I ended up flooding the stage when I tried doing that. So back to the drawing board on that one. Um, I think in terms of what the completed process has kind of made me think about, it's apart from just problems that I could have fixed, like my audio, my constant audio issues will haunt me for forever. And as I'm editing, I'm like, ah, there's an easy, easy solution to that a month ago. And too late now. Uh, but I think it's kind of made me think about potentially being more, um, more shorter form. Granted, 12 minutes is pretty short, but kind of the idea of I'd like to have a concept like this and tell myself like, okay, make something that's four minutes long, get the point across. Because I think one thing that I'm not known for is brevity. And I think I, that's something that in my filmmaking and just in myself, I think I'm gonna work on a little bit. I can't actually remember what the question is. <laughs> ideas that you had to toss and then new ideas that came from the capstone okay well i pretty much started with a 2d animation and obviously i ended up with a 2d animation so i mean the the details of the script itself definitely changed along the way but i think the big picture pretty much was the same um and for the future because it is a mini series there are more episodes that i could animate in the future and that might be fun to do so Yep. Um, so one idea I remember I had was I wanted to make like a series or something like tell a story with like moving images, kind of like I was, I kept picturing like the moving paintings in Harry Potter, something like that would be really fun. And I mean, I might still make it, who knows, but I am definitely going to keep um, doing digital manipulation and um, taking just pictures, I, I don't know. I have such a vast interest in um, like subjects for photography, so I'll definitely continue with that. Uh, so I think the thing that I want to do the most uh, that I wasn't able to do was like some more animation type things. Uh, I wanted to do like visualizers for, you know, I could have done it for a whole album of songs, of just a looping animation for each song that's something to go along with it. 
And uh, that's something I really was interested in and was a little disappointed I wasn't able to do. But I think that's maybe something I could do now that I am not working on my capstone. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I've always kind of been planning on being a double major. So what you going to do? Mm, animation comic book. Yep, that was my idea the whole time. But, you know, originally I guess I was going to do the same superhero. So the comic book I have was, I guess you would say, my superhero of me. But I was going to do uh, my brother's comic book. And that's what the animation is about. But to start that story, you would need about, I don't know, 300 pages of backstory. So I went with the easier one. The one, you know, he literally just gets hit by a spaceship. <laughs> easier to fit into a comic. OK, can you, if you pass it down to Lila? There's a couple that I'm going to do rapid fire for you. Th these don't have to be long answers. But there's, someone asked, why didn't you use any dialogue? <laughs> that never crossed my mind. Um, I I don't know. I never had a desire to make them speak. I don't think my characters are meant to. I think you're, the viewer is just supposed to be kind of forced in a way to move through the world and experience it that way. OK, the next quick one is, uh, what does it mean to you that the women are turning to stone in the middle? What does that petrification mean? Yeah, so the the theory is kind of based on that book I was talking about. Um, so the the pillar in the middle and the light coming from it is kind of to represent like logic um, and like rationality, um, like the Apollonian. Um, so the kind of story I went with was like, the women are being kind of trapped by like logic and reason, and they're running from it into the natural world. OK, and this one comes from Professor Jasperson for everybody. What non-MART classes informed your capstone? Was there anything that you were drawing upon from your Bethany experience that wasn't in one of our major courses? Um, so. Definitely a lot of English classes. I'm an English minor, um, and a lot of classes with like um, Elizabeth Torres and Angie Johnson and Lars Johnson. I had been taking a couple of Lars's classes when I started my capstone, so a lot of the ideas from like the Romantic period were also really inspiring to me in my capstone. Um, so I guess similar to that, I liked all of the classes that I had with Angie Johnson. I think those very directly related because you do a lot of like analysis of a certain video or or like a episode of a TV show, and I think like just doing that really helps with your own creative process to be able to analyze, you know, and dissect into somebody else's work. I think really are like that helps set up the framework for you to be able to do things. Um, well, most of my classes were kind of incorporated into my majors, but definitely, uh, drawing with, like, Bukowski in, like, the, uh, inking style I really try to put into my comic, but with my animation, I don't know, I kind of can't think of anything for my animation for our comic, so... Um, pretty much what's already been said is Angie Johnson. Um, <laughs> she's so lovely. But screenwriting in particular for me was a revolutionary class because just like the process of like creating this thing was really good for me to like actually, you know, work through it. And I don't know if it's like an industry process, but just the process we read about and did with our own projects was just super helpful. So definitely screenwriting for me. Am I allowed to just gesture broadly at the theater department? Uh, because obviously it kind of combines stuff. So uh, I mean, I guess five for five, shout out to Angie Johnson for uh, working with me on the script for a bit. Um, 
yeah, just the whole, um, I'm trying not to cheat and just say theater because that it kind of was a theater project alongside Mart. Um, but yeah, the, the screenwriting course kind of got me in cause I'd never written anything before. Um, and just, yeah, kind of those, uh, analysis, English classes, and of course, theater, directing, playwriting, kind of an important aspect to this project. But Okay, I think that uh, has pretty well exhausted the questions from online, and we're running a little past our hour mark, which I think is fine, but is there any questions from the room? If not, let's do another round of applause for our, our capstones. This live stream is recorded and we're going to post it to YouTube so you can share it with whoever you need to share it with. It'll be out there in the world forever now. It's, it's part of the, the universe. So uh, congratulations to everyone once again.